Hi, and welcome to lesson 10 on entanglement-based quantum key distribution, and in particular, an entanglement-based uh, protocol known as E91. Step 1, Introduction. Recall that in the previous lesson, we learned about the BB84 single photon-based quantum key distribution protocol. And to remind you how it works, let's do a little overview. We have Alice and Bob that uh, use a public quantum channel to establish a secret key. What Alice does is she uh, prepares uh, qubits in four different states at random. The states can be either 0, 1, or they can be plus or minus. And then she transmits these states to Bob. Then what Bob does is he randomly measures them either in an X or Z basis. After the measurement is finished, Alice and Bob exchange information about the preparation basis and the measurement basis. And if these coincide, they keep results for those measurements. And that forms the basis for their secret key. And if they dedicate a portion of the secret key uh, to eavesdropper detection, they can do that due to uh, non-orthogonality of the original encoded qubit states. Now, Imagine that there's an eavesdropper Eve, and we said that she cannot know uh, the preparation basis. We will demonstrate why. So consider the case that she does have information about uh, the basis in which Alice prepared the original qubits. What then she can do is she intercepts qubit, the first qubit, and she knows that th this qubit was prepared in the Z basis. Therefore, she measures it in the Z basis and obtains the corresponding classical bit, which in this case is zero. And then she just uh, resends the photon back to Bob. She intercepts the second qubit. And again, because she knows the information about Alice's preparation basis, she measures in the appropriate basis, which in this case is the X basis. And because the case is minus, she obtains a classical bit one. And she repeats this procedure, so on and so forth. She measures in the Pauli Z basis for the third qubit, she obtains a classical bit zero, and then resends that qubit back to Bob. So what she is doing is, she, although she's measuring these qubits, she is not disturbing them at all, because she's always measuring in the same basis in which they were prepared. So in this way, she can actually build up a secret key that's perfectly correlated with the key that Alice and Bob are sharing. And, of course, this is a big problem, because then the whole procedure of BB84 fails. Even though Alice and Bob, they can try, to, um, they can try and uh, detect Alice, as they would in the normal protocol, but she has not disturbed any of the qubits. Therefore, they will never detect her presence. So, in this lesson, we will go over a protocol that's a little bit more secure in this sense and it relies on a pre-shared entanglement between Alice and Bob. We will assume that Alice and Bob can communicate over a classical channel, and also that there is some source of entangled states. And this source generates uh, multiple copies of an entangled state and distributes it to Alice and to Bob. However, we will see that in, in this protocol, an entanglement-based protocol, even if the source of the entangled qubit, so the main resource in this protocol, is Eve, the protocol still remains secure in the sense that Alice and Bob can easily, um, easily detect an eavesdropping Eve. So, let's learn about this protocol. 